All right, today's video is talking about Postman. Now, my first Postman video, I talked about the client side of things so that you could test an existing server. If you had a server API, some PHP or Node.js, Ruby, Python, you've got some sort of API sitting on a server and you wanted to test it, make sure it's working. So you could use Postman to build little requests and test them, write some scripts, test that. Now, with this video, I want to talk about the reverse of that. I want to talk about the situation where you've got your front end client side development team. They're a little bit ahead and they're ready to start testing the API, but the server side team's not ready yet. So your API is still under development. It's not ready for prime time. You can use Postman to mock that server. And that's what this video is about. So I have the Postman application. I've got that up and running here. If you don't know how to run that, you can uh, watch the beginning of the last video. Uh, GetPostman.com is the website to download it and install it. This is the website right here. And I'm going to sign in. I'm just going to use my uh, Google credentials to log into my account here. And on this, um, I just have the free account right now with this. Now, with the free account, there is a certain amount of usage. So if you go to the little arrow in the top corner here, go to resource usage, you can see this is what I'm allowed to use for free every month. And the one that we're going to be talking about today is mock usage. So calls made to your mock server. This month, I've made 22 calls to the mock server. I can go up to 1,000 per month. So if you're doing development work, you're just testing, this is really all you need. Now, if you are doing a lot of development, or if you're working with a team, then I also recommend upgrading the account, getting the paid version. You get a lot more for your money with that. But if you're just on your own, starting out, you've got one little API that you're testing, you can probably get away with the free one doing as much as you need. So I have that. Now, in my workspace, what I've got is a couple of collections created here. So this is on the website. There's my collections. If I come into the app in here, inside this workspace called YouTube Demos, there it is on both sides, I have these collections. So there's history. This is all the calls that you've made from Postman. And collections. Collections are groups of calls that you make to endpoints, to different URLs. You can create folders, group them together inside of folders, you can create environments. Now, we've got here two different, actually three different environments. Uh, one of them I'm going to just delete just to show you how you can do that. Right here, this is the quick look. So you can pick something from this list and then click on the eye to view what you've got set up inside of there. Or if you click on the gear, you get the choice of the three of them and you can click on them to view or you can come in and download delete which is what I'm going to do here I'm not using this one so I'm going to delete that environment so what is an environment well it's really just a collection of um, configuration settings some variables that you can use when you're testing certain calls things like the base URL for your call if you're, you're going to be using that again and again and if you're writing any scripts if you want to set up all these different endpoints you're not going to want to have to write out the full URL every time so that's what our environment gives us if I come in here and I look at this and I come over to mocks you can see here's the URL so this would be a pain to have to write again and again and again so you stick this into an environmental variable so you can use it over and over now, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm going to walk, walk you through the process. So let's say that I've got my, my workspace set up, this group. I'm going to create a new collection because I want to set up a new mock server. I want to set up this mock server that has the endpoints that I'm going to be calling against from my JavaScript. And each one of those endpoints needs to have something that will send data back to my web pages because I'm t trying to test that. So a collection. I will create one, just YouTube. We'll call it that. There's my description, wonderful, created. Okay, here is my collection. Now I've got no endpoints in here yet. There's no requests. We can say, okay, I wanna add a request for this. Uh, request name, well, 
I don't have a URL or anything like that. Just we'll call this one sample just for testing. Okay, this is where it's going to go. Save it to my YouTube. There we are. Now I've got a request. It's just got a name. There's nothing else inside of here yet. I want to have a mock server built by Postman for me that I can call to test this. So I'm going to come into right here into this collection, come over to the arrow, open it up and come to the tab that says mocks and I'm going to add a mock. This is basically creating a temporary server. So I click on that. There's the name for it. Use an environment optional. Well, I don't have one set up yet, but I could create one. I could select one of these ones that I've got already, or say no environment set up. Make it private. Um, I'll come back to that. We're going to talk about there's an API key that if you make your mock server private, it means that calls to your endpoints require the API key be sent as a header as well. So I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Here we are, we will create our mock server. Here's the URL right here. They all end with mock.pstmn.io. So this is the URL and then the subdomain is this big long unique string right here. But this is the URL for all of my endpoints. So I'll create, okay, good. I can copy that, this little bit right here, copy the whole URL for me. So I've got a collection, I have one request. I've got the mock server set up for this. I'm going to close that. I'm going to come over here. And look, I said no environment, but it created one for me right here, YouTube. So I'm going to take a look at that one. We'll inspect that. And by default, what it did was it created an environment variable called URL with that initial value, the one that I copied. So I don't even need to paste it. It's already here. There's global variables as well as environment variables. I don't have any global variables set up right now. A global variable is one that spans multiple environments. So typically with each one of your collections, you will have an environment. Part of that environment will be things like the URL. If you have any keys or uh, let's say you're using an external API and you're bringing data in with that external API to use in these calls, that's probably something that you want to set up as a global variable because you're using it from different collections. My environment one, I'm good with just this. So I've got this one called URL. Great. Now, this sample, here's the name right here. You can edit it if you want. Sample X. Okay, there it is. It's renamed. It's renamed. The URL, I'm going to make a get request as opposed to post or some other header. So get two curly braces, and there is my environmental variable. See the E? Now this is that URL. So I just have to type that instead of that big long string or copying and pasting that big long string. So we can say, this is going to be my endpoint. Great. Uh, headers, this is if you're using the API key, this is where you would define it. It would be called x-api-key. That's the name of it. And then here is the API key that you get from the website. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. All right, headers. So I'm not setting anything. Authorization, uh, yeah, in inherit from the parent. I don't have any in the parent, so there's no authorization here. Fine, so we'll save this. That's all good. Now, this just defines the endpoint. That's all this does. It says, says on this server, there needs to be a, we'll call it a page, a URL with that name stuff. If I want to add parameters, so query string parameters, I can come in here and say that uh, there's going to be one, whoops, one with the name ID and the value is going to be one, two, three. So you can see that gets appended onto here. Here's my sample. So I'll save this. Now, all I've defined here really is that page. If I want to start making calls, what I have to do is I have to create examples. This is what the server is going to send back for me. So I'm going to add an example. I'll come in here. This is the example request. 
So there it is. There's the key that I defined. Headers. I don't have any headers that I need to set. Down here at the bottom, here's the important part. This is the response. This is what we're getting in the example, is the response. You need to set a status code. You need to set what the data type is that's coming back. I want JSON. And I will create a JSON file here. Uh, what did I pass in? It was ID is one, two, three. So let's send back something like that. Let's send back ID one, two, three. Name is going to be Bubba. And item cheese. There we go. Very creative. Okay. This is the data that is now going to come back from this URL. So I will save my example. There's the name here. I'll come back up to the request. So I've got a request called sample x. This is the URL. And actually, I don't even need these parameters. I'll just take those off and save it. Inside the examples, right here at the top, there's my sample. I'm going to rename this as uh, sample 200 response. There we are. Now it's got a, a little bit more meaningful name. Come back. Now inside of here, you can see I've got a sample 200 response. That makes a little bit more sense for what we're doing. If I click send, boom, here's the response. So we want to be able to do this with a whole bunch of URLs. And we want to get data coming back. And it is JSON. Yeah, there we go. There's the JSON coming back. Try it again. Boom, we get the data back. Great. So this works. Now I'd want to do this in my JavaScript that runs in the browser. I've got this URL. So I need to take that URL. I come in here, go to my mocks. Here's the domain. I can copy that and then I can paste it into my JavaScript. Now, this is the one I just created now. I've got ones that I created earlier. So let's close this one. Here's my URL names public. So I've got names. And then in my examples, there's a 200 response that I built earlier. There's some data that's going to come back. And you can see that I've got the response set up to be JSON with a 200 status code. Now, let's jump over to my JavaScript here. Here it is. This is the endpoint for that public URL for names. See, slash names at the end here. Everything that comes before that, this is that URL environment variable. My page, what does it do? Well, I've got a DOM content loaded event. When you click anywhere on the page, it's going to set up a header. I need this if I'm doing the private. This is the API key that I set up for this. So I would add this if it's a private. I've got some options. It's get. It's going to be a cores request. Postman mock servers by default are set up to support cores. So you will have no problem fetching them, even though they're coming from this different domain. My request, I'm doing a fetch. I'm bringing it out. And then I'm writing out the data that's returned inside of here on the page. So here's my page. Refresh to make sure I've got the latest thing. This is my page right here that's loaded. I click on the page. And there's two requests. So this first one, if we look at the headers. That's the options call. Because this is a cores request, so we need the two. There's the option and then the actual response. Option came back saying, yep, you're all good. There's the origin. We're allowed to have that access control request headers, XAPI key. So that was allowed to come through. And then the actual response, here it is. This is the data that's coming back. And we can go into response. There's the data that I'm writing out on the page. So there's the one working for the public version. And then for the private one, I'm just going to use this variable instead here. And I've got that header already in here. So we're good. We'll just refresh this page. Now it should make the request to that private one. And here's the one that I set up in the private one. I wanted to demonstrate a 401 unauthorized with this message. So quickly jump into here, my private one. And in my examples, 
here is my 401 request that I've got set up. I've got the status 401. That's what's coming back right here from this one. In this sample request, you can see I didn't add the header for the XAPI key up in here. So it's what's sending this back. Um, last thing is that actual API key. To get that, we'll go to our website. So back into here and my collections, these are the two that I had set up previously. We're going to go over to integrations. Here's integrations with the Postman API. You can browse the integrations. You can click on this. It doesn't really matter what order you do this. You're going to be able to get to the same place. So there it is. View details. Details talks about what the key is. You can click on this button to, this is from the integration page. You get to here, get an API key. You click on that. You get to create a new one. Like I created one for this video specifically. Here it is. This is the API key. So I can copy that, bring that in, and then use that in my JavaScript as well as in my examples. Okay, so that should be enough to get you started building these endpoints. So you want to create inside your collection, you're going to have a folder, you're going to create multiple endpoints. And then for each one of those endpoints, here's the public one. For each one of these, what you want to do is set up at least one example. So the example is going to be when you make the request for this URL, this is the response I want to come back. So you want to be careful to design the data, whether it's JSON, XML, HTML, or just plain text, whatever the response is that you want to use, what's going to be built in the future as your API, try and mimic that here. This becomes a good discussion point. If you've got multiple people on your team, they can all look at this and see, okay, this is what it's supposed to be returning. So as they're writing the Node.js or the PHP or whatever it is, they know what the response is supposed to look like because you're already using these demos to test your client side code. All right, so I know that's a lot of information. Slow it down, jump back and forth, watch it over and again. Um, do some experimenting with it. Try creating lots of examples. Try creating lots of endpoints, these URLs. And honestly, it won't take you that long to get comfortable with this. And then you'll be able to test it from your browser so you can build a dummy version of your server side code right here in Postman. And that's what mock servers are all about. All right, so I hope that helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.